Distributed messaging queues are a key component in building scalable and reliable distributed systems. It allows multiple services to communicate and exchange messages even when they are running on different servers, which is specially applied in microservices architecture and big data processing. In this short video, I'll first define the basics of messaging system, the types of messaging systems, and understand the distributed messaging queue with real life examples. So let's get started. First, let's talk about distributed messaging system. A distributed messaging system encompasses the overall infrastructure and mechanisms required for message-based communication in a distributed environment. It includes components such as message brokers, routing protocols, and delivery mechanisms. A distributed messaging queue, sometimes referred to as a message broker, is a key component of a distributed messaging system. It serves as a buffer or intermediary between message producers and consumers, allowing messages to be temporarily stored until they are processed by the intended recipients. A messaging system is responsible for transferring data among services, applications, or servers. Such a system helps decouple different parts of a distributed system by providing an asynchronous way of transferring messaging between the sender and the receiver. Hence, all senders or producers and receivers or consumers focus on the data or message without worrying about the mechanism used to share the data. Public subscribe or point-to-point -point queuing are communication patterns or paradigms that can be implemented within a distributed messaging system using a distributed messaging queue. Publish subscribe or PubSub I have explained in a great detail in my previous video. But at a high level in the PubSub model, messages are divided into topics. A publisher or producer sends a message to a topic that gets stored in the messaging system under that topic. The subscribers or the consumer subscribe to a topic to receive every message published on that topic. Now one important difference between PubSub and P2P queuing model is that the PubSub model allows multiple consumers to get the same message. So if two consumers subscribe to the same topic, they will receive all messages published on that topic, making it suitable for broadcasting information to multiple subscribers. Apache Kafka, for example, is a distributed messaging system that supports the PubSub messaging pattern. In addition to PubSub, Kafka also supports other messaging patterns such as P2P messaging through its direct messaging capabilities between producers and consumers. This versatility and its high throughput, fault tolerance and real-time stream processing capabilities makes Apache Kafka a popular choice for building distributed messaging systems. But more on Apache Kafka in my future videos. In the P2P queuing model, messages are stored sequentially in a queue. Producers push messages to the rear end of the queue and the consumers extract the messages from the front of the queue. In the P2P model, messages are sent from a center to a specific receiver known as queue or destination. And each message is consumed by only one receiver, ensuring that each message is processed exactly once. So unlike PubSub model, in a P2P, a particular message can be consumed by a maximum of one user only. Once a consumer grabs a message, it is removed from the queue such that the next consumer will get the next message, ensuring exclusive messaging processing. SQS, which stands for Simple Queuing Service, is a fully managed messaging queue service provided by AWS. It is basically an implementation of P2P messaging pattern and is commonly used in various scenarios, including distributed application architecture, microservices communication, and event-driven systems. Now let's consider an example in the context of microservices communication. Imagine an e-commerce application with multiple microservices, including an order service, payment service, and shipping service. When a customer places an order, the order service needs to communicate with the payment service and the shipping service to process the order. The order service acts as the center and it sends messages containing order information directly to the respective microservices queues. For instance, when the order service receives a new order, it enqueues a message containing the order details into the payment services queue. The payment service, acting as the receiver, dequeues the message from its specific queue, processes the payment transaction, and acknowledges the completion. Similarly, the order service enqueues another message into the shipping services queue containing the necessary order information. The shipping service, being the receiver for that queue, dequeues the message and retrieves the order details and initiates the shipping process accordingly. In this P2P model, 
Each microservice has its own dedicated SQS and messages flow directly from the sender to the intended receiver. This ensures that each microservice consumes the messages addressed to them, enabling independent processing and avoiding unnecessary message distribution. SQS enables communication between microservices by allowing the order service to send messages directly to the queues of the payment service and shipping service. P2P queuing model provides a simple and straightforward approach for direct messaging between microservices, enabling efficient and targeted communication. It allows for asynchronous one-to-one -one communication, ensuring that each message is consumed by the intended receiver, contributing to the overall resilience and scalability of the system. Apart from PubSub model and P2P queuing, there are also other flavors of messaging such as event-driven messaging or stream processing, which I will cover in my future videos when we do a deep dive on Apache Kafka.